Okay, so today we are going to do uh, something that will be very easy for many of you that do not like to solder or do not know how to solder. You're not happy with your soldering skills. Uh, it's a great little product. And what it is, it's a solder seal wire connector. It works as a heat shrink. And then the center has a flux uh, solder mix. Once heated up, it melts and solders your wires for you. Don't need a soldering gun, all you need is a heat gun. Um, these larger ones usually are better with a lighter for the center to melt that up. Uh, but if you have a high power heat gun, uh, it can also melt that center, solder your wires together and be done. You can't mess up with this. Uh, for doing repairs inside your quad, um, something like this would be harder. Um, the smaller style would be easy, but if you had to use larger ones, there's just not enough room inside your quad. So, But for making a balance cable, which is what we're going to do today, this is going to be great for you guys that do not like soldering or know how to solder. And if you recall, I made this one here for my uh, Hubson cable. And all I did is I took the Hubson cable and I cut into it and I added the banana connectors and made my own charger balance charging cable. And for this case, it's my IMAX B6 AC version 2 that has the capability to charge LIHV batteries, which are your higher voltage batteries, which would be 11.4 volts in this case. A normal LiPo would be 11.1. Um, I also made one for the Storm, if you recall. Uh, the Storm battery, this is a 7.6, so that's a uh, LIHB battery as well. And that's the cable that I made up for that. And all of these two here, I did soldering. And uh, often you hear that I don't know how to solder or my soldering skills aren't that good, so I was trying to think of different alternatives and I remember this product here and thought this will be perfect so I'm going to show you how to do it and we're also going to do a balance cable for the USB style so I'll show you how to do that it, turn this into a balance cable so you can also charge these little batteries on your hobby grade charger so good stuff here today and we'll try to make this simple as possible but all you want is an extension cable so for the Zeno you want a 3 cell a 3s extension cable and then you're gonna cut and strip the wires so I've already cut and stripped all these wires next thing you want to do is you're gonna want to get your balance cable cut and strip the wires my balance cable came with an XT30 on the end of it so I just cut that off so again we're not going to harm this at all this is just for the Xeno battery just like that and then we're going to plug into this so here's our cable we're going to make it up this is the end that plugs into the charger so we want to have the, bat the banana plugs on the same end as that so they all plug into the charger. Now first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put heat shrink over top of this. So the heat shrink I have is kind of tight for this size. So I like to roll this up so I can try to get that heat shrink over top of it. And I've already put a little bit of lube inside here because without it I don't think it'll go over these wires and it works much easier with a little lube inside there and now I'm going to pull them all down they're nice and even down here get all the lube off the wires make them dry 
Okay, so we have our wires sticking out, so now the next step is we just want to connect them to here. But once we do that, we're going to have these connectors on, and we're going to want to put some heat shrink over top of those. So let's put this heat shrink on. It's larger, so it'll fit over top of those connectors. And I don't have a long one. These might stick out because I like to cover the plug too. So we're going to go with two of them. Pull that out of the way. Normally I would recommend just using one longer one. But in this case we're going to have to use two. They're slightly different size <clears throat> and you'll see why when I get there. But right now we're just going to pull them out of the way. So what we want to do is first do our positive wires and I'm going to push these other wires out of the way and just do this, twist these wires like that and then we're going to take this larger one, slide our wire on there and then we're going to take the red you want to make sure both the wires are within that solder point just like that so now I'm going to take a heat gun and I'm going to heat this up and I might have to take a since this is a heavier one I might have to take a lighter to the center of it but we're just going to heat this up with a heat gun and you want to have a pretty powerful heat gun and this is an 1800 watt power gun here and it, I turn it up to full power. Okay, so now we're going to shrink it down. Try to stay close so you can see it. don't know if you can see it but it's shiny in there now so that solder melted and now our wires are all connected that's as simple as it gets right there no soldering whatsoever now let's get the other wires ready so now we have these other black wires we have to determine which is our common. I can already tell this is the banana cable here. So now I have to determine which is our negative wire. So we want to pull on it. The negative wire is on the outside. So I'm going to pull on it. And it's that one right there. So this is our negative. Pull it back out. Keep a hold of it twist it with the banana cable and we're going to do the same thing put the connector on there push it up to the solder point now we want to get the negative from here let's push these aside Hopefully I'm not blocking too much with my hands, I apologize. There's our negative. We're going to put it in there. Okay, just like that. And now we're going to do the same thing with the heat gun.
you can tell on the camera, but you see it melt and it spreads. You'll see it get real shiny and spread. That means the solder has melted and it's now mixed with the wire. Hopefully you can see that. So that's done. That's our positive and our negative. So now we need to determine which one of these gets hooked up. So we're going to go with the one next to the red. We're going to go down here. We're going to grab that wire and pull it. And it's this one right here. Let's pull it back. And we're going to hook it to that one there. So for that we can use a smaller connector, put it on, get them into the solder point, right there. I'm going to use a pair of tweezers I think. Yeah, that might be alright. Let's heat it up. done I don't know if you can see the see it where it's all shiny now only one left to do is this one again going with the smaller size push it up in there Okay, try to keep these out of the way. You don't want to overheat all the wires. So now we're going to heat this one up. Now they're all soldered. So this is great because you don't have to know how to solder to do it. A uh, great product. So now they're a little hot. Usually you want to let them cool down. But I'm going to go ahead and pull my heat shrink up. And you want to try to keep all the wires the same length so they don't bulk up too much. They look pretty good. I'm going to slide this up. And I'm going to slide this one up. Because I like to cover the plug. This size that I'm using just covers the plug. Okay. So we're going to cover the plug up with those two different sizes. So now I just need to shrink that up.
there you have it. So now we should be able to plug this into our Xeno battery and have an extension. That's a nice long one too. So what we're going to do, let me unhook this one. First thing you want to do is hook it up to your charger before you hook it up to the battery. And it's always good to be safe and put something over top of your banana cable. That way if you forget and you hook it into the battery, you don't short it out. All right, so we're gonna plug it into the charger. Hook this plug here into our three cell. Plug this end into our Xeno battery. Got this nice long cable. And I already have it set. And we are good. Don't know if you can see that. But we're charging. So there you have it. Now you can balance charge your Xeno battery with your hobby grade IMAX B6 version 2 or what other whatever other kind of hobby grade charger you have uh, that charges the LIHV batteries. Um, and you're good to go. The, the, the great thing about this is it's not only a good sufficient charge but you can also now put your Xeno battery into storage mode um, so you don't have to worry about putting them in the quad, running the quad, running the batteries down and uh, doing storage mode that way. You can simply hook them to your charger, put them in the exact same rate of storage mode every single time. And that's that. I have not timed it, but this charges faster as well. Um, so that's how you do that one. And now we're going to do the USB version. So for the USB type charger cables, that's these right here. And as you see, I've already gone and cut it but it's for these little proprietary batteries that you get you get with your brushed models and what they do is they slide into the end of that and then you plug this into your computer or a little USB adapter and you charge it so I'm going to show you how to make this cable uh, work without the USB and so you, that way you can balance charge it on the IMAX B6 version 2 like I have or whatever hobby grade you have uh, and again you want to do you want the capability to have a LA LIHV uh, a higher voltage lipo charge and one of these is the high voltage and one of them is the uh, standard um, you have, which one is it? This one here is the high voltage 7.6 and then this one here is the standard LiPo 7.4. Uh, so this one you can pretty much charge on uh, any of your hobby grade chargers. Uh, newer versions like the version 2 IMAX uh, has the capability to charge the LIHV batteries. Um, if you don't have that capability, uh, I think I've said it before, you can charge, still charge these batteries as a regular LiPo uh, at 7.4, but you're going to reduce your flight time. Uh, that flight time is very minimal that it's going to reduce by, but when it's a battery like this where you have a very short, say, <clears throat> 8 minute flight time or something like that, uh, you'll probably notice it pretty significantly. Um, the storm battery, it's a LIHV. If I charge that at, at the regular LiPo rate at 7.4, uh, this 
battery on the Storm, you definitely see it in the flight time because you have such a short flight window in that. Uh, so every little bit you can get is always appreciated when flying because you want that little bit more of flight time. So for batteries that are the 7.6, uh, that's the LIHV. Batteries that are 7.4, that's the light, regular LiPo. So you want to make sure you have the uh, hobby grade charger that allows you to charge LIHV. But putting these batteries aside, back to the cable itself, I've already gone ahead and cut this and stripped the wires so we we no longer need the USB portion. We're done with that. So now we have this. Now again trying to stick with not having to solder there's a few ways you can make this. Um, one nice little kit is this kit right here. And this is so you can put your own balance plugs on and um, uh, I'll get I'll put a link to that in the video as well um, but these are your pin connectors and they have them in all sizes in this kit up to uh, 6s and um, the 2s that we're working with right now this is what you have You have both ends. And what you do is it comes with the pins, the male and female pins, and you simply break them off and uh, attach your wires. So in this case, um, if we wanted to just make one of these and plug it into a ba extension balance cable uh, or balance cable extension, um, what we would do is we would just make up one of these ends for it, which would be this one right here, because your balance cable is going to have, your extension cable is going to already have this on it. And then what you're going to do is you just simply break these off by bending them back and forth until they come off. It's very tiny, tiny little thing. But what it does is it goes on the wire and then you crimp it around the wire. And then once you've crimped it around all three wires, you pick the correct location. And for this one, it would be red positive here on the far end, black negative on the other end, and then the only cable you're left with is the blue one that would be in the center. And you'd have all these on there, and then you'll see they have a little tab. So when you slide it in place, it that tab locks into one of these slots. So I'm not going to do it because it does take some time uh, it's easy to do uh, they do recommend a tool that you can use to crimp those I don't use that tool I simply just take the end of my wire strippers and I crimp them down with that and uh, that works fine for me I didn't buy the extra tool to do it uh, the other thing I like to do is once I have these on my wires and I have them crimped I do like to do put a little solder on there um, if you want to try something like a little bit of glue or something like that um, I'm sure that'll work fine some sort of a super glue I'm sure that'll work fine it, and again this is just strictly for those of you who do not like to solder normally when I make this type of stuff up I always solder my wires I put some heat shrink on them um, but I'm showing you different alternatives so uh, I purchased this little kit just so I could make this video and show you guys, uh, but it will come in handy for me in the future, um, as in this hobby it's always always nice to be able to make up your own cables uh, if I have one that has a plug come off the end of it or something. 
So that's one way to do it, and I have one where I've already done it, just so you can see, and I didn't put heat shrink on it. That way you can see it nice and clear. See if we can get all the wires showing. Okay. So there you can see the one I've already made. And as you, as you can tell, it's for the USB style cable. So I've already made one of these. And what this is, is this is basically just a, uh, still just a standard cable. It's, it has no function to balance. And doing it this way, um, I made it this way because you can take the battery, I'm sorry, you can take the extension cable that I made for the storm and you can simply just plug it into that. I'm not going to press it all the way in because they snap in real hard and are hard to get out. But then you can hook this up to your charger. So I'll show you how that works. Let's plug it into the charger. Hook up my positive. Hook up my negative. Plug this into the two cell. Which way I got it? Right there. Okay, let's get this stuff out of the way. So, this is your balance extension. And we'll go ahead and just call this a balance cable, although it cannot balance without being hooked up to that. Move that out of the way. And let's plug it into the extension. Okay. Now we'll get our 7.6 proprietary battery. You want to press these in pretty good and tight. The contacts on these aren't the greatest. So there we are. Now I'm going to set this up for my LIHV. We'll see if we can get you that in here. I don't have much cord, so I think you can see that. Let's get this out of the way. What am I looking for here? Okay. We want to find LIHV. There it is. Look, select start or enter. Okay. It said at 2 amps. I'm going to leave it alone. But if you notice, it says 7.6 2S. That's what we want. LIHV balance charge. So that's that. We're all hooked up. And then press start. Checking the battery. Confirm. Now it's going to give you a warning on this one. I don't know about other hobby grades, but it just says warning. This is for LIHV batteries only. Click OK, which is enter. I waited too long. Okay, there's the warning. Press enter. And there you see it's charging. So. That's real handy. Now you don't have to use a USB charger. You can uh, take these old USB cables and now use them on your hobby grade charger. So next, I'll show you the other one. These things are tight. Okay, so there's one more look at it just so you can see. Pretty simple. These connectors are nice to have if you don't like to solder or if you can't solder. So there's your, your one alternative. And then the other alternative, here you see we have this one cut. And that's going back to the method of adding the banana cable and putting your 
heat shrink on the end of it and this is that same heat shrink I used earlier where you have the solder in it and uh, what I've done here is I've taken the balance cable the two cell balance cable on the positive and negative I've added the banana connectors cables and we'll set those down right there and then what you do is you simply just hook up your positive negative and your blue cable and stick those in each one like so just like that so then what you'll end up doing is you'll take your heat gun and shrink those down and melt that solder to make your connection and then you'll be able to use this uh, on your balance on your uh, hobby grade charger as well and don't forget to put your heat shrink on uh, in this case you would want to use one big one that way you can cover all of these make it nice and neat and you want to buy ones that are longer this kit that I have it comes with a whole bunch of small cut ones and I think I've showed you this one in another video but I'll show you again it's a nice kit uh, but it does not have any long ones um, so uh, I highly recommend you get even if you get a kit like this make sure you buy a small kit that just has some of the long ones so when you're making a cable like this you can cover the long area so that's how you do it that way it's the same pretty much for every cable um, you know to show you again we'll go over the different cables that we've made and then here we have the one on the Zeno. And where's my stock one for the Zeno? Where'd I put it? Here it is. So here's all the cables I've made in my three videos for you guys. So here we have a total of five cables that I made up. And again, uh, this is the third video I've made, so you guys might want to check the other videos because one is kind of a quick reference uh, for those who pretty much can just see the quick version and understand it and know what to do and are good solderers. Uh, the second one I made uh, shows the soldering a little more close up and how you solder. Uh, for those of you who um, aren't great at soldering and want to see how I did it and then there's this version the third video where I show you how to do it without soldering so to go over all the cables and finish this up um, we'll start with the Zeno this is the this is the method I prefer for the Zeno uh, this is a balance cable uh, I do not need any extension. I can go directly with this. Um, you know, some people have commented, why don't I just make a uh, balance extension? Um, I had planned to do all of this in one video, uh, but that's just not how it worked out. So uh, now you see I've made a balance extension as well. So if you see in the comments where people have said you just need to make a balance extension, um, there it is. This is a balance extension. Um, I don't like always doing a balance extension if I can avoid it because now I've got two cables, monster long cable, <laughs> and uh, I just prefer to have the short and sweet one. But basically, 
um, all you would end up doing is taking the stock cable of the Zeno battery, which they're calling a balance cable, but I don't think it balances all that well on their charger. You plug it in, plug this end into your, your uh, charger, plug this end into your battery, and then you can properly balance charge this and put it into storage mode. Again, the most important part of this is your battery maintenance and being able to put it into storage mode is a big plus. So that is the Xeno versions. You can keep the stock cable the way it is and just make a balance extension cable, which is a 3S or you can make your own complete balance cable using the existing Xeno and adding the banana clips or banana plugs to the positive and negative like I showed you in the video in one of my videos and then we have a regular balance extension cable for a two cell which you would use for something like the storm battery or similar okay and then you have the USB cables where you can take and simply put on the, uh, the pin connectors and add the um, two cell balance plug and then in, you would need the balance extension cable that I made up for the storm so you would use these together and then finally the last one would be taking the USB stripping the cables the wires putting them with banana cables on the negative and positive put your red into the red your blue into the black and your black into the black and then you would simply heat these up to shrink them down and melt the solder points one thing I want to point out when you're working with this type of wire it is so small when you go to take your heat gun and shrink these it will melt these wires so what I recommend in this case for this is take a lighter and start here take the lighter and work your way down melt the solder real good and then melt this down but spend less time on this end so you don't melt these wires a lighter will work perfectly fine it'll melt that solder and you'll be in good shape so you just want to take care not to heat these up too much because they melt um, and I have done it always remember in, in a situation like this put your heat shrink on first your heat shrink sleeve put that on first and just pull it somewhere out of the way then put your wires together and then when you're done you can simply slide it up over top and shrink it and then cover up your wires and you'll end up with a nice cleaner looking cable like this Okay, so I think that's it. I think we have covered everything to do with these balance cables. <laughs> one thing I want to point out, one last thing. That's, I have made this mistake several times uh, in this video or in these three videos. When you hook up, the first thing you want to do is hook this up to your charger. Don't hook it up to the battery right away. 
hook it up to your charger. Uh, often I make the mistake of plugging it into the battery first. And then if I don't have a protective cover on this, touch those together, it's going to spark and it's going to short out. Uh, you can unplug and plug back in, it resets the battery. But you want to keep a protective cover on there. So always hook up to your charger. Once you're all hooked up to the charger, then go and plug into your battery on the Xeno. Or any battery for that matter. Never be hooked up to any battery and have your banana cables uh, sitting there to where they can touch each other. Um, and find you something that you can slide over top of the covers. These are, I have hundreds of these, I think. These are all just, they come on the end of a, they protect, protect, protect the threads on uh, pneumatic cylinders. Uh, at work, I work with a lot of pneumatic cylinders, and when we get them, they come with these on them, so I always keep them for whatever, because I'm a hoarder, and uh, in many cases, uh, being a hoarder is not too bad because you find a use for the things that you hoard. <laughs> so that's it. That is all the cables. So I think you got it covered uh, as far as how to solder and how to avoid soldering. Uh, these are great, great little heat shrinks, uh, solder seal wire shrink, uh, shrink. Uh, connectors that will help anybody who cannot solder. If you can't use these, there's something wrong. <laughs> it, it doesn't get any simpler. So it, this little kit that I have, it comes with uh, four different sizes, all the way down to a real small one. Uh, it's a very good kit. So I highly recommend that. I'll put the link to that in the video. And I'll put the link do this in the video it's also something good to have and you know with this hobby a lot of this stuff it's it's very inexpensive so I'm the type of person that even if I'm going to use it once then I buy it and uh, so those will be in the links uh, if you want banana cables uh, all you have to do is just search banana cables um, and then in my case, what I did is I, I searched banana cables. Um, I think I searched two cell banana cables because I wanted something that was going to be a small gauge. Uh, if you get up into the higher cells, like if you get the, here's a good example. If you get the XT60 versus the XT30, you get different wire gauge, at least for the ones that I bought. So when I purchased my banana cables, they actually had the XT30 connectors on the end of them, and I simply just cut the connectors off and I used the cables. Uh, so just search um, like two cell banana cables and you should be able to find, uh, find these. Um, I can put the link in the video to ones that I purchased and uh, if that if you have a hard time finding them wherever you shop uh, then try the link I put in there and the only other thing you'll need again would be the heat shrink kit um, I don't think I need to put a link to that in there just search heat shrink and then choose whatever is your best preference whatever works best for you all right, so that is it. This video number three for making balance cables wraps it all up. Uh, shouldn't have to do one of these for a while. I think I've covered every single one. Uh, sorry I didn't put it all into one video, but I'm kind of glad it worked out that way uh, for those who can solder, who those who want to learn soldering a little bit better, and for those of you who just give up and totally cannot solder or just don't have the the uh, devices to do it, the tools to do it. So, 
um, that's it for this video and thank you once again to all my subscribers for subscribing and uh, if you do not subscribe please do um, I've got several things planned um, coming up uh, like I said before uh, my next video or one of my next videos is going to be taking the Xeno apart showing you how to open it up and how to make it so you can use an XT60 and use a, a different type of battery uh, with the same specs as the Xeno stock battery and by doing that mod uh, you'll be able to use the Xeno battery and if you if your Xeno battery ever dies or you can't get any other batteries in your country and you only have the one then you have other options where you can stick this in and plug this into it. So you'll have the option to use both batteries. Not at the same time, but you can use both batteries individually. And uh, we're going to do this with a nice clean mod. So that's one of my upcoming videos. And I have a few others that are coming up. Just some informative some little informative stuff how to stuff things like that so uh, the typical stuff I do on my channel something to uh, just give you a little bit of knowledge all right so uh, click that thumbs up button and uh, those are, again those of you who do not subscribe please click su subscribe and I will see you in the next video thanks very much